Hello! Today we're going to talk about electric generators. So we just have one goal today. That's what we'll do, talk about electric generators, and those are devices that generate electricity. And specifically we're going to talk about generating electricity by exploiting Faraday's law. And that's what most electricity generation systems do. Not all of them, but most of them. Okay, so we have in the past talked about an, an electric motor. An electric motor, what it does is it takes electrical energy and transforms it into mechanical energy, energy associated with motion. Electric generator does the opposite, transforms mechanical energy, energy associated with motion, into electrical energy. In other words, it generates electricity. And interestingly enough, you can use exactly the same device, which is a coil in a magnetic field, and you can use it as a motor or as a generator. Depends which way you run it. So we'll look at that. So we got a couple of pictures at the top, A and B, and that is a uh, what's called a DC motor, direct current motor. It's attached to a battery. It's just a loop attached to a battery by means of what we call a split ring commutator. Okay, and the uh, the ring here is basically a metal cylinder that's cut in half, and one half is electrically insulated from the other half. The idea here is that current is provided to the loop by a battery, and the loop is sitting in a magnetic field, so there's a torque on the loop, and that causes the current to spin and then you've converted electrical energy into mechanical energy, energy associated with motion, the spinning of the loop in this case. And you can make cars move or wheels move or something like that with these electric motors. And the deal with the split ring commutator is that every half rotation of the loop, as far as the loop is concerned, the current through the loop reverses direction. Okay, And that the point of that is to keep the torque going the same direction on the loop so you always get a spin in a particular direction. Okay, so then we get the picture at the bottom of the page and it's really the same system. It's a loop in a magnetic field but what we're going to do now is we're going to have some way to spin this loop so we've attached some crank or something that's not shown in the picture but we're making the loop rotate and then that means we're steadily changing the flux through this loop and that's going to induce a current and if you attach this thing as essentially a battery, it acts like a battery in the circuit, you can for instance light up a light bulb. Okay, But at the heart of these two devices, the motor at the top and the generator at the bottom, you have a loop in a magnetic field. Okay, So the same basic device can be used for both things. Okay. If you put electricity in, you get motion out. If you put motion in, you get electricity out. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit more. So here's kind of a head-on view of a loop. And you see where it narrows down on the right. It looks like it's not tied to anything. But in this case, imagine that it really is tied to something. And it could be tied, for instance, to a light bulb, making the light bulb light up. If this is a really big electric generator, a whole hydroelectric power plant for instance, this might be connected to several hundred homes and it's providing electricity for that many homes for instance. Okay, so what we're going to do is now we're going to make the loop rotate. And the loop rotates and you can see that the flux changes as a function of time. Okay, and that's great, and we have a graph of, graph of flux versus time. And if the rotation rate is constant, then the flux versus time graph oscillates sinusoidally. In this particular case, it actually looks like a cosine graph. And that's, again, a characteristic of rotating the loop at a constant rate. Okay, so that was flux as a function of time. Now we're going to look at current as a function of time and the heading on the graph actually says flux and current versus time. You can't actually see the FL and the flux and the E and the time, but anyway. 
Okay, so again, we're rotating the loop, same thing. We just added a little more information, and we've added the information about the current direction. You can see the current going on the uh, loop, and then you can see a graph. That's the purple one. Graph of current is a function of time. Okay, so with the flux, it goes up and down following a cosine graph, and then the current actually it goes up and down following a sine graph. And you should check that the current direction, the way the current goes around the loop, is consistent with our pictorial method for Lenz's law. Okay, it's because it definitely should be. Okay, so uh, that's kind of qualitatively how things work. And so we can pull out our equations and see what happens here, equation-wise. So let's say we have a coil and it's got n turns. It's got each turn has an area A. And we spin it at a constant rate in a uniform magnetic field of magnitude B. And so we can apply Faraday's law to figure out the induced EMF, the induced voltage. Okay, so here's Faraday's law. E is minus N delta flux, magnetic flux over delta T, and magnetic flux we can write as BA cosine theta. Okay, so in this case, we have a uniform magnetic field that's not changing, so B is a constant. Our loop has a fixed area, uh, at least the magnitude of the area is fixed, the direction of it is changing, and that's the theta that's actually changing our equation. So in BA cosine theta, B and A are constant values, a being the magnitude of the area, and theta, the angle between the field and the area vector, is what is changing. And we're going to change that at a steady rate. So we can go back to kind of our constant uh, angular speed equation. Theta is omega angular speed times time, and replace theta by omega t. Okay, so we pull the things that are constant out of the delta, so B and A come out front. And we get the induced EMF is minus NBA delta cosine omega t with respect to time. Okay, so we're actually taking a derivative of cosine omega t with respect to time, and what you get there is minus sine omega t. Uh, in fact, minus omega sine omega t. Okay, so the minus sign goes away. You get an omega that comes out front, and you're and you get a sine when you're all done. Okay. And so this is why, as we saw, the flux graph was going up and down like, like a cosine, but the uh, current graph, which is going to be in phase with the voltage graph, it goes up and down like a sine. Okay, that's totally consistent with what we just did here. Okay, so just to summarize, spinning a loop in a magnetic field at a constant rate is a great way to generate AC electricity. That's what comes out of a wall socket. Okay, so this is exactly how it's done. At power plants, probably a long way from your home, somebody is, probably what they're doing is they're actually spinning magnets around a fixed loop. Because then you don't have to worry about the wires on the loop wrapping around and things like that. It's a little easier to do that. So in a hydroelectricity power plant, for instance, the water comes in, the, wa the mechanical energy of the water, kinetic energy of the water, is makes the uh, magnets spin around the loop that generates electricity. And it goes up and down like a sine wave, which is exactly what we need. Okay, so the peak voltage is, let's see what it is. The induced EMF is omega NBA sine omega t. Okay, so the sine omega t part that's a number between minus 1 and 1. It oscillates between minus 1 and 1, like a sine wave curve, familiar sine wave curve. And then the omega NBA are just constants, right? So the maximum value of the voltage occurs when sine omega t is 1. Okay, so you set the sine equal to 1, and you see what's left. Well, what's left is all the other stuff, omega NBA. Okay, so the maximum voltage you generate is the angular speed at which the rotation is happening at, multiplied by the number of turns, multiplied by the magnetic field, multiplied by the area. Okay. And just in case you're slightly confused by this, this is not WNBA. We're not talking about women's basketball here. We're talking about Omega NBA. Okay. 
Okay, so that's how you generate electricity. Spin a coil in a magnetic field. Piece of cake. Okay, so that is all for today.